Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of TEW9 WWE Challenge run here. Still getting used to saying 9 instead of 2020, but we're getting there. Um, and we're back today with another episode of Raw last week, of course. We had the SummerSlam Fallout, and we're going to see how things continue building up uh, towards our first premium live event here on Monday nights, Bad Blood. So without further ado, I say we just jump straight into it here with another edition of Monday Night Raw. And Raw is going to start with Neo Judgment Day coming out. Dom, Finn, JD McDonough, and Liv Morgan, the Raw Tag Champs, the World Women's Champ. They do have quite a bit of gold, don't they? And Neo Judgment Day, New Judgment Day, they come out. Big smiles on their faces. And they said last week to end Raw, they showed exactly what they're about, what they're capable of, what everyone knows they're capable of, okay? People might have thought that without Rhea, without da Damien, that, that, that the new Judgment Day couldn't compete with the old one, but trust us, Neo Judgment Day is better than ever. And so we thought we ended La Ra last week, why don't we start it here tonight? Because I got some things to get off my chest, personally. Okay? Now, Damien, you are at home right now, Hopefully in as much pain as possible. <sighs> Recovering from all that oxygen loss from those headlocks. And from your ass getting knocked out by Gunter. From losing your world championship. You might be thinking, why, Finn? Why'd you do it? Well, let me tell you, Damien, that you did it to yourself. Okay? You wanted to parade around here. Acting like the big man. Because you had the big belt. Acting like you run the Judgment Day. No one runs the Judgment Day. In Neo Judgment Day, we all know that. We are all equal here. Okay, big smiles on everyone's faces. And you, Damien, you never got that. And neither did Rhea. And that's why you both had to go. At the end of the day. And that's why Judgment Day is so, 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 so much better. Without you. Finn handing the mic over to Dom, saying that, and Rhea, you might be having some questions as well, but at the end of the day, I grew up, okay? And Liv here, she gets that. Like F Finn said, Judgment Day doesn't have a leader. You always acted like you were in charge, okay? You got me away, away from my dad. When you knew I wanted independence, and yet you treat me like a child, getting me to call you mommy. No. I'm not a child. I'm a grown-ass man. And Liv said it was time to stand up for myself. And so that's what I did. And it felt so good. And I'm so happy to be here with Neo Judgment Day, with Liv by my side. Big smiles as the mic to live and live saying, Rhea, I want you to know that this was personal. That you deserved every solitary second of this. Okay? I took your title, I took your man, and I took your group, your friends, your family. I took everything you love, Rhea. And I want you to know I had so much fun doing it. And I need you to know that the fun is still only just beginning. As they get interrupted by the Yeet Man himself, Jimmy Us Jay Uso. <laughs> Jay Uso makes his way down to the ring. Yeet, 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 you know. Saying to, you know, no disrespect for the interruption. Okay. I just thought I'd come out here. And see for myself the man who fumbled the baddest woman on the planet. How you doing, Dom? Now, Liv, trust me, I see you there. And you're good, but you're not mommy, are ya? But, Dom, you do you. Okay, I'm perfectly happy. You've given me a bit of a free run there. So, uh, I, I mean, I know what I'm going for. <laughs> Yeet. Uh, if, you, if you get what I'm yeeting at. Um, but I, I just do I. I want to come out, you know, um, because you see, the thing is, us in the back, we, we liked Damien, 
Okay, we had our problems with him at times because of his involvement in the Judgment Day, of course. But as a world champion, as a locker room leader, we needed Damien, okay? And, you know, with, with so much going on, so many people coming and going, Damien really helped steady the ship back there, really helped prove himself. And so doing what you guys did to him, doing what you guys did to Rhea, who did the same on the women's side, is just... That's not cool, loose. That's not very oozy, okay? As my friend Sammy says. Um, and you see, the thing is, when you do stuff like that, you you piss a lot of people off. I'll be direct. I'll be straight with it. And see, the people you piss off, they're not just over here on Monday nights. Because now Rhea Ripley, Liv, she has some distant friends of her own. As a woman who's on her own against them all. She never glistens, never glimes. Are you <laughs> out comes the EST. Bianca Bell Air dances out to the ring. Bianca. Uh uh. Okay, me and Rhea, we might have had our problems. We might have had our battles. We might have many, 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 many more battles to come, but what y'all did to her, that's That was cold. And that was not on. Okay? And so when I heard Jay had some rumblings over here as well. I thought I'd get in touch. And I thought maybe we'd come out here and see what you two got. Crowd hyped. 70 for that. Very good. Happy with that. Um, very happy, honestly. Uh, 70, we take those. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to have a little mixed tag match here to kick things off. Liv Morgan and Dirty Dominic Mysterio, her man, taking on Jay Uso and Bianca Belair from over on... Um, Friday nights, you know, uh, Adam Pierce from Raw to Raw GM was over there uh, past this past Friday. You know, all the women there for the women's style announcement, and maybe you know through that Bianca heard the rumblings on the Raw women's locker room side, which led to her hearing through throughout Jay as well and the problems with the men, and led to us here. Look at me adding logic to this. <laughs> Insane, I know. Um, mixed tag action, Bianca and Jay versus Liv and Dom. Just a solid match. Uh, a lot of it is mainly kind of Bianca and Liv going at it. You know, Dom trying to avoid getting in, kind of, against Jay, <laughs> the yeet man himself. Um, in the end, it is Jay and Dom going at it when the music of a Mr. Damien Priest hits. Damien Priest starts to walk out. Big, angry look on his face. Finn and Jay are on the outside, hyping each other up, not looking mad. Dom in the ring looking a bit scared. Liv Morgan in a bit of shock, wondering if who, you know who is also just around the corner with Damien. Damien, he's charging down. Finn sends JD up first. Massive big boot takes JD McDonough down. Damien, not like resting on his laurels there, just picks up JD. Massive choke, choke slam. Off the ramp to the little technical area, sure. <laughs> Him gone. Big roar from Damien, crowd cheering, Damien charging down, brawling out with Finn, you know, referee distracted by all that as well. As Liv Morgan yanked off the apron by Rhea Ripley, who a big close down, clothesline even, to take Liv Morgan down, <laughs> you know, call off guard. Rhea staring into the ring at Dominic, who begins to back things up as he gets turned by Jey Uso, big super kick, top rope. Splash down. One, two, three. Your winners, Bianca Belair and Jey Uso, thanks to that appearance from Damien and Rhea. 72 for the match is really good, honestly. 63 for the wrestling, 66 for the crowd, who are white hot right now. 60s for Dom and Liv, 67 Jay, 65 Bianca. Really happy with that. That's really good, actually. <laughs> Neil Judgment Day. Um, defeated, you know, Liv hightailing it out there, Rhea distracted by Dom for a second there, staring him down, allowed Liv the time to get up and get out of there, you know. Uh, Damien going into the ring as well, Ju Neo Judgment Day on the ramp, kind of licking their wounds as Damien and Rhea in the ring together with Jay, with Bianca, who are celebrating their win. Rhea and Damien just staring down with Neo Judgment Day on the ramp, who are all caught off guard, but Finn's just looking pissed. Dom's looking a little bit scared, because it's Dom and Liv. Uh, surprised, we'll go with uh, Liv's expression here. Um, as, yeah, Damien and Rhea celebrate with Bianca and Jay, their win a little bit, but mainly, you know, kind of head in the game here, staring down with Neo Judgment Day after what went down. Good start to the show, happy with that. As um, 
Then we cut to a vignette again for Kiana James Enterprises. Kiana James picking things up. You know, not just quality in the ring, on the mic, but in business. And she's happy, so happy to introduce today us all to Kiana James Enterprises' first blockbuster client. Okay, you might know him as a former former Raw Tag Team Champion. You might know him as a freak of nature. Okay, no one's this tall, no one's this strong, no one's this powerful, but he is. But what you don't know about her new client, Omas, is that he is also a master of fashion, a master of scents, of perfumes, a master of style. Omas is not just a one, a true wonder of the world. Branding-wise, marketing-wise, you know, sponsorship-wise, he is every company's dream. Who wouldn't want this man modeling their products, utilizing their products? Because when this man does something, Mr. Tall and Sexy here, when he does something, when he says something, everybody pays attention and listens. Um, as yes, we have the debut of... Damn it, he's a failure. <laughs> Mr. Tall and Sexy, who cares? Um, damn. Ugh. I, I, I keep mentioning it twice. I really like the background. Keanu James and Ryan's first client. Omas, Mr. Tall and Sexy. 38, that's fine. Who else is going to be added to Keanu James Enterprises' roster of clientele? Tune in next week to find out, as we're going to go to what should actually be a really bang banger match. Um... As advertised and announced last week, Ilya Dragunov taking on Pete Dunn, who's got his own beef going on, obviously. Um, in the end, though, it, it's just, look, it's just a banger. <laughs> We're just going to let these guys wrestle for like 10, 15 minutes. Classic. Um, Seamus makes his way down to the ring. He's not even interfering. He's got his coat on. He's not in wrestling position. He's just watching. Come on, Butch. Show me what you can do. Huh? You want me to take notice? Huh? You, you're tired of living in my shadow to show me what you can do, Butch. Huh? I'm calling it Butch, just pissing Pete off even more. Um, and the distraction causing maybe Pete lose his head a bit. And in the end, Ilya Dragunov hits. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um... <laughs> And picks up the win. For 76, I told them to go all out. They did. They tore the house down. 45 for the crowd. 68 for the wrestling. Really good. 69 Ilya. 68 Pete. 76. They have great chem. No complaints. Really, really happy with that. Ilya Dragunov picks up the victory here. Um, thanks in part to that in, uh, distraction from Seamus. I don't know how he's going to feel about that. Oh, Ilya. I don't know how he's going to gonna feel about that but oh well 76 we take those well of course we take those <laughs> it's really good as uh, so we're gonna go backstage to alpha academy a little bit of disarray with chad gable gone and everything that's happened otis akira maxine trying to hype them up but struggling training a bit um as in comes ivy nile um who says to him you know guys i know a lot's been going on i can't believe what the creed brothers did well they were like my brothers um, and seeing what they've become, I, I just don't recognize them anymore. But still, I just wanted you guys to know that I'm making some calls, I'm putting in some contacts, and I'm going to find us a new trainer here for Alpha Academy, okay? So try to keep your spirits up, try and keep them high, because Alpha Academy is, it's not dead. It's not over. It's only just getting started, guys. For 43. Who's going to be Alpha Academy's new trainer? With Chad gone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Who do you think it's going to be? Who do you want it to be? Who could it be? We're going to have to wait and see. Um, as so we're going to go backstage to Adam Pierce with Drew McIntyre. And Drew McIntyre says, Thank you for this meeting. Uh, Drew McIntyre's always Irish. I apologize. I haven't quite cracked the Scottish accent yet, but I can bust out a Scottish accent, an Irish accent, whatever you want. And Drew's like, finally, I came to your sense, Pierce. Congratulations. I'm ready for my world title shop. And Pierce says, give me a minute. We're just waiting for someone. <laughs> Seth Rollins comes in as well. Drew not happy with that. Pierce says, okay, you're both here. Now, I know you. last week you both made it clear what you wanted, okay? You want a shot 
at Gunter's world title. Understandable, okay? And Seth, after what happened at Money in a Bank with you and Damien, you're definitely, you know, you have a valid claim. You have a valid for being owed a shot. And Drew, I know you, you make it very clear constantly that you feel you're owed a shot. So, okay, I'll let you beat CM Punk at SummerSlam. Massive win. I'll let you earn it as well. Okay, we're just waiting for a couple more guys. Knock on the door. In walks from Friday Night Smackdown. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Adam Pearce was a busy, busy boy on Friday, wasn't he? <laughs> Kevin and Randy, they said to Cody that they, they had some business to do. And in they walk. And Adam says, welcome. I'm glad you guys made it. Okay. Whilst I was on Friday announcing the new women's mid-card titles, stares at camera, um, I had a word with Kevin and Randy here, both incredible superstars, and i keeping you guys in mind, and I thought, Seth and Drew, they want to prove they deserve a shot at the title? Okay, I'll give them a chance to earn it, so here is what we're going to do. Tonight, in the main event, it's going to be you, Seth Rollins, taking on the Viper the 14 time world champion, Randy Orton. Seth, jokey face into serious face. Obviously, it's giving when Cody came out for his big return at WrestleMania when they fought that first time, where he's kind of laughing and then he just kind of shakes it off and he's into serious mode because Seth and Randy, they go way back, obviously. They have a lot of history. And now, another chapter in their feud being written here in the main event of Raw with a, you know, if Seth wins, he gets that shot of the world title. And then Pierce saying, and you, Drew, I'm sure you're a smart guy, I'm sure you can work this out, but next week in the main event, you are going to be taking on Kevin Owens. If you guys win, you can have your match, okay? So, Drew, if you win and Seth loses, it'll be you and Gunter at Bad Blood. Seth, it could be you versus Gunter. If you both win, it'll be a triple threat match, okay? All right, 66, happy with that. Um, yeah, I mean, just two bang on main events out for the next couple weeks as well, so no complaints from me. <laughs> as uh yeah should be good should be good Seth Randy later tonight fingers crossed for a high rating there as we're gonna go to the ring for the Intercontinental title match absolutely stacked episode up right, uh, right now isn't it um Bron Breaker against Bronson Reed just um yeah just a hoss match Bronson Reed gonna show what he can do you know big stage for him not quite a big stage as what he did to Seth IRL, but <laughs> I'll give him a chance. And Braun also getting a chance to do what he can do against a talented wrestler and a big guy as well. So getting to really show off his strength. They just go at it. We let him go at it for a while. In the end, though, Braun Breaker does come out on top with the Gorilla Press Power Slam. Honestly, the image of him doing that to Bronson Reed would be incredible. I can see the Instagram views. 74 Amazing. 46 for the crowd, 62 for the wrestling, 64 Bron, 59 Bronson. Happy with that. Really good. They have good Ken as well, so that, that's good. Tonight, the Brons work well. Um, <laughs> 74. And we had the 72 earlier, I think. It's a really good episode of Raw thus far in the ring, um, as Bron Breaker picks up the victory and is the first mid-card champion to pick up a win since the fighting champion's advantage was announced. And so, if I remember it's making in time... Um, You'll see this pretty little graphic, just demonstrating it. If he gets to 10 defences, he can vacate his Inconel title for a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. So, yeah, I know in the comments, some of you got what I was going for. Some of you made some valid criticisms of it, uh, which I get. Um, I just, I think, canonically, it is somewhat realistic, especially after all the Logan Paul stuff. He is like the third longest in the US champ now, defended it two times. The idea of making it incentivize to defend your titles. Um, and definitely, I think it would create a more of an interest around the mid-card titles from higher-up wrestlers as well, giving them a valid reason for wanting to go after it. But yeah, Bron Breaker gets to win. Happy with that. His first defense makes the def defense number one. If that hits 10, Bron Breaker and Gunter could have a date with Destiny, if Gunter's got the belt at the time. Um, but yeah, really good. Happy with that. As we're going to go, speaking of backstage, the Gunter and Ludwig Kaiser being interviewed by Kathy Kelly. Congratulating him on their recent victories. Gunter, the world champion Ludwig last week against Sheamus. How is Imperium feeling? And Imperium's feeling good. Imperium's on top. Imperium is running Monday nights. As they were always going to. There was no question of if. It was just a question of when and the when is now. 
as they're interrupted by a very, very sweaty Ilya Jaganov, congratulating them on their victories. And on his victory as well, he congratulates himself. It's kind of getting right into his face, saying, But don't think I forgot you. And I know you have not forgotten what I did to you, what I took from you all that time ago in NXT UK. And you've got the gold I want again. And I promise I will happily do what I did once more. Ludwig not happy with this disrespect to the ring general. They square up a little. 61. Next week, Ilya Dragunov taking on Ludwig Kaiser. Bangers. Next week, we got Drew Kevin. We got Ilya Ludwig. We got... No, that's all so far. It's bangers. <laughs> it's all so far. Like, it's nothing. It's really good. It's a good episode we're building. Um, as then we're going to go to the Kabuki Warriors taking on The Punishment, a.k.a. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Please comment any better names, okay? I, I literally had a makeshift name to the lesbians, but that wasn't going to cut it. Then I saw someone did a gif of Scissor Me Daddy for the acclaimed, and there was a pun in there with scissoring, but I'm not childish enough for that one. So we've just gone with The Punishment for now. Um... Yeah, Sonya's at ringside, she's messing about, the Kotokai runs out, she wasn't here at the start of the match after her match last week, rushes out, beats up Sonya, distraction, Kabuki Warriors come out on top, 69, happy with that. Kairi's in poor form, that's sad, 48 for the crowd, 57 for the wrestling, hot crowd, 72 Oscar, Jesus, 59 Kairi, 52 Shayna, 45 Zay, happy with that, Kabuki Warriors get the win and stand tall over the punishment. Maybe it'll grow on me. As we're going to go to happier times, we go to a beautiful church. Once more, Reggie, walking up to the front, puts on the mask, ready to read the holy scripts, as scripts. Um, and it was, and he says, good morning, welcome back. Last week, we talked the first day. And now we're here for the second day, and the second day is about a word. I would tell you that word, that word is firmament. What is firmament, you ask? Well, let me tell you. On the second day, he said, Let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And thus he made the firmament, firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. <laughs> And it was so, I'm sorry, I've never said firmament in my life, and I've said it so much now. And so he called the firmament heaven. The firmament he made in his image, his place, the atmosphere from which we breathe, the firmament. Firmament means atmosphere, if you're curious. And so on the second day, the evening and the morning and the firmament and the heavens were born. Can I get a hallelujah? Everybody getting up, you know, the gospel music playing, everybody clapping. A holy scripts, books closed, a scripts holds out his arms um, for a 34, yeah. Look. Ooh, scripts gimmick, well, very good. I'll give a hallelujah for that one. Hey, amen. <laughs> 34, happy with that. I mean, these segments are slowly going to build up scripts, hopefully. Um, as yes, day two. If you're not familiar with the Bible story, there's seven days, so strap in if you're not quite... <laughs> if you're wondering, how long is this going to go for? A while. Uh, what is this leading to? Some of you know. Um, and if you don't, I've booked some silly stuff in my time, so not everything can be serious and realistic now, can it? But it can be fun. That's my goal. Um, as we're going to have a little friendly tag match. The Masked Magic, Rey, and Dra Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee whose name is actually really growing on me, honestly, taking on The New Day, Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston. Just a fun, fair matchup between these two face tag teams, which gets interrupted by the Final Testament, who attack, you know, referee's not looking, Kofi from behind, he's not the legal man, Xavier is, Xavier gets distracted, Masked Magic don't, don't notice, the ref doesn't notice, and Masked Magic in the end pick up the win, Ray wasn't using the ropes for Ledridge, okay. So Masked Magic win the match, but they win it because the New Day was distracted, but Mars Magic don't know that. Okay? 
61, happy with that, 65 for the wrestling, 55 for the crowd, 68 dragons, 63 ray, 66 Kofi, 63 Co Xavier, happy with that, yeah. Um, Mars Magic get the win in um, not the fairest of circumstances, shall we say. As we go backstage, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley are pissed still, and they're talking with general manager Adam Pierce. And Adam Pierce tells him, okay, I understand how you guys are feeling. Trust me, I do. You're not happy, clearly. Um, and, hey, as Roger and the manager, I know a good match when I smell it. I smell some good chances here. So here's what we're going to do. Next week, I'm going to give you, you know, I gave Drew and Seth their chances. I'm going to give you guys chances as well to earn your matches, okay? Get, leave it with me. Okay, I'll set it up ready for next week. But Damien, I'm gonna give you a match, and if you win that match, you're gonna get a one-on-one -on -one match with Finn Balor at Bad Blood. And Rhea, you too. If you win your match, I'll give you a match. You win your match, then I will give you a one-on-one -on -one match for the Women's World Championship, your champion, former championship, against Liv Morgan and Rhea. Smiling, but then stopping for a second and getting on Pierce's face saying, I know exactly who I want to fight. I tried New Zealand for a sec, couldn't hit it. Okay, Rhea saying, next week, Pierce, give me Dom. For 74, Rhea walking out. 74, really good. Rhea was a star. Yeah, Damon and Rhea will both have matches next week to earn the matches they want at Bad Blood. And Rhea making it clear exactly what match she wants. A match with her former son. No, that's weird. With the man who used to call her mommy, Dominic Mysterio. Is it going to happen? We'll see. Do you want it to happen? I kind of do. Um, 70 Voldo, really good. Um, as we're going to get to our main event. It is one-on-one -on -one Seth Rollins and Randy Orton. These two have a lot of history obviously. They've been through a lot together, you know. Um, S.H.I.E.L.D. versus Evolution, into the Authority, the Authority with S.H.I.E.L.D. before that, into all the Authority stuff with them. You can keep going on even further from there. They've had a match at WrestleMania. It was really good. Um, and they're going to go at it here, and it's going to go long. Just a good just classic wrestling between Seth and Orton. They can do it. We know they can do it. Um... And yeah, Seth really wants to earn this shot. He is still nursing a little bit of an injury. So he's not 100%, but he's trying his best here. But Randy Orton, cold-blooded the Viper is, he is targeting that injury as much as he can. To try and give himself the best chance, because of course he is. Um, in the end, I have a planned spot in my mind. Um, we even have a creative finish <laughs> assigned for us. I know, using a TW9 feature, what a world. So we'll see if that helps the rating. Um... For a creative finish, I thought it would create a finish. You know, obviously, you know the WrestleMania 31 ending. Seth goes for the curb stomp. You know, Randy flips him up, stands up, RKO midair. It's gorgeous. We're going to try that, except they're both much older now and much more hurt, but we're going to do a riff on it. Seth goes for the curb stomp. Randy flings him up. Seth manages to hang in the air, though. He kind of propels himself up a little bit higher, to hang in the air a little bit higher. Randy goes for the RKO too soon lands flat on his back and Seth in midair this gets in more insane it's a creative finish you all give it to me midair Seth transitions from the, the curve stomp attempt into a phoenix splash <laughs> so he's spinning midair and he phoenix splashes down onto Randy and then Seth quickly to his feet running against the rope Randy turned around curb stomp one two three Ooh, 81. That did do really well. We used our creative finish. <laughs> um, and they're pretty good chemistry, which helped as well. And I'm really happy with that. Yeah, creative finish. It helped the segment rating. Can't argue. 74 for the crowd. They were very hot. 73 for the wrestling was very good. 74 Seth, 71 Randy. They're both good wrestlers. They have good chem. 81. Highest rated match of the save so far. Had to be these guys. I will also say, I really do like the backgrounds. I put them in my community tab. I added these little GIF backgrounds for Raw and SmackDown. I got them off the Grey Dog Software Storms somewhere. If you made them, let me know. I will credit you. I apologise. I just cannot remember I found them. <laughs> but I really like them. And for situations like this, I think it looks really good. Just making it clear, these are separate brands, but still. Um, but yeah, 
Seth Rollins picks up the win. And so we know at the very least at Bad Blood it will be Gunter versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. Will Drew McIntyre be making it a triple threat? We'll have to wait and see next week. But for now, Seth Rollins gets the win. And Raw gets us to 77, a really good episode. Moving a lot of things on. I'm juggling a lot of stories here. We're starting kind of this Alpha Academy storyline as well. No Wyatt 6 this week. Literally just no space. We carry on with them next week. They're, I don't know, maybe... I really love horror stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll get inspired at some point. I'm struggling a little bit, but I'll get inspired. Um, but yeah, we're moving forward with a hell of a lot of storylines here. But I'm really happy. Some really good in-ring stuff. Really good show, 77. Let me know your thoughts, though. Um, what did you think of this episode? Where do you think things are going? You know, what are you hoping to see come bad blood? Um, can you visualise the finish I'm saying for Seth Randy? Am I insane? I am insane. But it looks really cool in my head. I hope it does yours, too. Um... <laughs> that is going to be it for today. Hope you have enjoyed. Let me know if you want to comment down below. As always, leave a like if you have enjoyed and subscribe for more as we continue on the road to Bad Blood and on SmackDown over to Insurrection. John Cena's challenge Cody Rhodes to the fight for the WWE Championship. You're not going to want to miss that, are you? So subscribe for the next episode. And yeah, as always, until next time, I just want to say a very special thank you for watching.